Yeah, baby. A E I O U. Thought we'd start with that one for you. Love it, Bronson. That's a classic. Let's bring it back up. Keep it going, baby. This song actually rocks. Keep it going, Ronnie. E I O U. Don't worry. Stop. Every day. Oh, yeah. A great start. Gets you in the mood, man. Gotta love it. For all the people in the the middle aged people, that's the name. You know where we're going with that one. It's honestly a great song. You played that for me the first time I ever heard it the other day. Love it. And uh, it stuck with me. Yeah, it's a great. Um, it's literally just saying the vowels. <laughs> A-E-I-O-U now, and sometimes Y. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's literally just saying like, it's like a, if a second grade teacher made a song to try to get their students to learn the vowels. Oh, it's a, it's a great, great, great song. The beat is awesome. I love the disco. It gets you. Even you were doing the shoulder movement. Oh, you, yeah, you, you can't not. And you have no rhythm. You're doing the white man rhythm shit. You know what? I have good all. rhythm. You have no rhythm. But if that's a separate issue. Yeah. So, but that was good, Brian. Thanks for sharing. That was, You're that welcome. Was, maybe you could play that like, when things are getting a little bit of low. You play it again. Everybody take a stand up. And, and I'll, I'll end the show with that. The, so if you didn't notice, we, we, well, we might sound different. But we also, uh, and there's a dog in the background, we might sound different. And I was able to kind of fade the music in while we were also talking because we are in a new studio. We have our new equipment. We uh, are all we are all out. We're doing it. Yeah, it looks great. I got to tell you, I'm very impressed. We have other than the stupid dog in the background. All right, we got a hey, Nelly. Now ridiculous. Okay, maybe she took him out. No. So, yeah, so we have Bronson ordered. We have this like state of the art mics and soundtrack and soundboard and everything else. And it looks pretty impressive. And, uh, and you'll all be able to see next week for the live episode. You'll be able to see us in all our glory. Well, we did spend enough money on this. So we, so we believe in our podcast. We invested we, in it. Yeah. Well, I invested in it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, investing my time and you're investing the money. No, I'm investing my time too. What the fuck are you talking right, about? But I, I set it up. I did all the research. What we need on vacation. I wasn't, this was, this is my first day of vacation. Okay, okay, Bronson, you love this shit, number one. Number two is- Right, so it, th- I'm not saying I invested my ba- time in a bad no, way, but, but, I inv- but I invest my but time. Really, it's not that big. The risk factor's on me, but what who's I'm getting- Who's the one who does the show uh, schedule, what no, we're going to do every week? Yeah, because you should. Right, I'm sc- I'm doing my time, yeah, my and you're point, doing the money. No, I don't put my time in the money, please, but the risk factor's <laughs> on me. But the reason why I'm saying that is, is we believe in our podcast, we've- we, we value our listeners and we think this is going to have longevity and uh, we wanted to invest in ourselves. So we are and give a better sound to our, to our listeners and it's the real deal. And I, and I love the way the setup is and we got our cool little headsets on. And yeah, this is money. the first time you can actually listen to it yeah. live. Yeah. I don't know. It's a good thing if I want to hear my voice, but I do enjoy it. So we've also got a soundboard now with us. So if my dad makes a bad joke, which is often, you know, I can give a little, you know, a little that. And if I do a good joke, what could people do? <laughs> Thank you. That's, That's great. So I love it. I love it. Thank oh, you. Oh, keep Thank going. They're, they're, yeah. oh, they're still gone. Oh, people, you're so kind to me. You're so we'll, we'll good. We'll be here all week. Stop, stop. I got stomach cramps. Come on. You're going to my ego. My head's too big. Enough, please, people. Okay. Hilarious. <laughs> all right. And we can also program our own things into that. So who knows? Maybe we'll take some sound bites of yours. Mine, program them in. We'll see. Or when we have people on, if there's certain things we like, excerpts from what they're saying, we can actually make it like a. But sound. why would we want to like replay someone saying, some random person saying something? Okay, let's move on. Yeah. So this week, you, it's getting into the holidays. You know, it's almost Christmas, a couple of days away, actually. And you love Christmas des- desserts, usually. I do? Yeah, like. Christmas is this? Christmas that, desserts. Okay, for example, like the Utah log. Sure. Love that shit. You love like Christmas cookies. You love gingerbread flavors. Oh, uh, you're going with the gingerbread man ver- thing? Yeah. We're going to start off with that? Yeah. All right. I'm okay with that. So why don't you tell the, the listeners what we're talking about, which is pretty well, fucked up in of itself. Dad got triggered this week because he loves gingerbread. Cookies. And actual gingerbread. Like, you just like that flavor. True, but I like gingerbread men, not because I'm into men. Because he likes men. It's okay, nice. Yeah, good play. You set wah, it up. Wah, wah. Yeah, or. <laughs> <laughs> Be um, with us, people. Okay. Um, 
he he liked gingerbread cookies, and right. so we went to buy him some at Trader Joe's this year. And can you say Trader Joe's? That, uh, that's trademarked, and we didn't have full authority to say it. So Trader, I mean, we were we've been playing music. I'm only teasing. Go ahead. Um, God, you're so literal with everything. Uh, that's okay. Um, so with the Trader Joe's, they were selling gingerbread cookies, and they weren't calling them gingerbread men. They were calling them ginger. Bread people. People. The box. The whole box is called gingerbread people. Yeah. Pretty fucked up. Why? Oh, we're going, we're playing that game. Well, why is it fucked up? Why do you think it's fucked up? Uh, I you don't do, know. You do have an issue with it. You do. All, let's be honest. Okay. Here's, you could join my side every now and then because I know you do agree with what I'm saying. You're just being either you. Well, what's trying, your side? You know my side is, please. Well, the, the people in the audience, the audience don't know your that's side. That's pretty fucked up that even that is finding that the. Companies need to be politically correct and can't call it gingerbread man. It's the same. It is a gingerbread man, not gingerbread people. By the way, I ate them, right? Mm-hmm. Did any of them have a penis or vagi- uh, vagina? Right, so they weren't men. No. but So what, what are you going to Oh, that's call? even more of a reason. So, so this should be called gingerbread gender Cookie. neutral? It should be gingerbread cookies. Oh, but they're generally called gingerbread men. Okay, just like the Aunt Jemima shit and Miss Butterworts and all that stuff and Uncle right, Ben's just rice. Be- just because something's always been done a certain way it doesn't mean that that's a good oh, way to keep I doing can't it. do this let's return the microphones I, can't do <laughs> I, this shit. I think it's ridiculous right to, tell me to you know, call tell me how people. you feel Bronson I I feel like it's ridiculous why Bronson tell me why because like why who was gingerbread men harming like what how is that offensive but I also like don't it's like okay it's not gingerbread people okay like it's not that big of a deal to me okay but it's not but you understand it's it's not one thing. It's accumulation of many things. So it continues on with this. This is like where I go back to saying it's the beginning of the end. It's this. It's everything else. Before you know it, five years from now, if you, you won't be able to identify yourself as a male. You have to identify, identify yourself as something else, like that binary crap, whatever, which I always have a hard time with. Yeah. I don't know why. But it, it's what it represents. It's no different than when they put cameras in the streets and things like that. Um, you know, some people think it's okay the government's watching. Some people think it's not okay. But to me, I think the less people know or whatever it is, that's, it, when you start taking away the rights and changing things, when you start changing things all the time, it's the accumulation of what's going to happen and, and how it grows exponentially. And that's the issue I have. It was just one thing out of the blue. All right, they changed it to gingerbread people from gingerbread men. So be it. I mean, but, why was it even gingerbread man in the first place? Like, that's a weird thing that we're eating little men cookies. That's weird, no? No, because they look like little people, little men. They look like little people. Okay, I knew I was going to say that. Please. Please. Uh, Please. Mr. Bill from Saturday Night Live, you remember? Oh, no, Mr. Bill. He was like a gingerbread man, right? Yeah. Well, should they change it now? Should they have have Mrs. Bill and Mr. Bill? Or just Bill. Or Pat. Yeah. Right? That name. You want to say what I'm saying? Or just they. I'm not as triggered as I was when you first brought the fucking box home and I saw it and I fucking lost it because it gets me uptight. But you do understand how it could be so offensive when you're so many years like, really, it's, it goes back to the straws, paper straws instead of plastic. That's the issue. It's this whole social media politi- politi- political correctness bullshit where we go back to creating a bunch of pussies and what happens is it's, it's, it's the beginning of the end. That's just my opinion and, I, and I'm not happy about it. I don't think Lando Lake should have changed. I don't think that he's, um, you know, the Washington Redskins is now the Washington football team. It's offensive. I don't like it. And I'm telling you, the ones that are going to suffer is not my generation. It's your generations and generations after that. And when you start taking away the simple things that everyone's so offended by and so thin-skinned, you create a bunch of pussies, and I have a problem with that. And I think that people need to be a little bit thicker in their skin and not be offended so easily. And it also, yeah, I agree. And again, I said this in the prior d- um, podcast adversity builds strength. Okay. It doesn't mean we have to, what we're doing in society is we're taking those. Move the mic a little away from your mouth, just a little. Am I? Just okay, move I mean, it a little away. Better? Yeah. Okay. So um, what we're doing is rather than bringing people up in their lives, we're taking those who are up and bringing them down to the people that can't handle it. And that's not what it's about. I agree. Like, yeah, if you extrapolate it to like a larger thing, it, I, I don't understand why anyone would be offended by Gingerbread Man or be offended by Lando Lakes by just a Native American just being on it. Unbelievable. I don't, I don't understand. 
and it would be maybe interesting to talk to an actual Native American person who was offended by it and be like, and ask them why, what is offending them? That'd be interesting to hear. I don't, I would probably, I probably feel like there aren't that many people who are actually offended by that. No, it's, it's like a corporate America it's thing, a not statement. an individual. They think they're making a statement right. to show we support, like you ever look at all the TV commercials that these shows that aren't, these companies that aren't even, no one's even asking for it, but they're putting on these advertisements. Right. Virtue signaling is what it's called. Where they say, I support um, Black Lives Matter. I support this. We're, we're in favor of this. All it is is... is virtue signaling is the word for what's, that. What does that mean, Rob? Like a virtue, right? Is it like a, when someone has a virtue, it's like a, a good moral uh, idea that they hold. Right, like if someone's very virtuous, they're like a very good person. I get it, but I don't think corporate America is- No, 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 but virtue signaling is when you display the <laughs> virtues you have out to the world so that people know that you're virtuous, but it's not real, like someone who's actually virtuous doesn't do that, you know what I mean? Right, it's like anonymous donation, what you say, who donated it, right. you're doing it for your, so is it And especially when someone like Amazon is spending millions of dollars in a, a campaign to put Black Lives Matter uh, on their commercials- they don't ca- actually care. There's no way. I don't know anyone who would be idiotic enough to be like, wow, Amazon actually cares about us now. There, there's no way they, d- it's just to sell more shit. That's all it's, it's all it's, pure economics. Right. So Same bullshit. with Nike. All of the shit that Nike did oh, with Colin Kaepernick and everything. Maybe the one CEO of Nike was like, yes, I agree with what Colin Kaepernick is doing. But as a company, the board of directors and everyone was like, let's get behind this because we can make money. And they've made plenty of money. Yeah, and Colin Kaepernick is the one who started this whole fucking thing. What whole thing? Black Lives Matter? The whole shit with taking a knee and everything else. People have a sense of wanting to, people have a sense of wanting to belong. Um, how can you hear the sound? Is the sound okay? Because I'm not hearing a great Yeah, it was coming sound. in and out for a second. I don't know why. Yeah, okay. We're still dealing <clears> with um, it. But I don't know. I, you know, when we grew up, Bronson, if you want to become faster, you worked harder at running. You want to become a better athlete, you trained harder. You want to become smart, get better grades, you studied harder and worked harder. All those things. We didn't, we, we aspired to be better. We didn't take the leaders and bring them down to us to make everybody equal. We aspired to become like the leaders and become, remember I said Indians and Chiefs, so that's not politically correct anymore. But today, what's going on in today's day and age, we're not... Although I don't know why Indians and Chiefs wouldn't be bad because both are the same. Like a chief is also an Indian. I'm talking about a leader, Bronson. I'm talking about from the standpoint of a leader. But, but you know, it's bad what I'm saying. We're making separation. We're putting labels. Or you could say like, I mean, yeah, whatever, whatever. But my point is we aspire to things. We didn't ask people to be brought down down to our level. We want to be better and brought up to their level. But in today's day and age, what we're doing is society... In order to create people, and I'm using air quotes, equal, which is I don't think there's any such thing as true equality. You can never get equality. Right? But this is what this is what's happening, what societies want to do, and it has nothing to do with for the benefit of human beings. It has nothing to do for the benefit of the consumers. It's all for the benefit of power by government, power by the billionaires, yes. and for big corporations to make more money. And people are so fucking stupid. They are stupid. They drink the Kool-Aid and buy into the shit, and they think it's for the benefit of them. It is not for the benefit of them. Once you take the civil liberties away and you take the rights away and you got Big Brother watching and they want to now do this you know, sort of unified currency with digital currency, once you start doing all that shit and you have no more privacies, it's all about control and they take away all your freedoms and liberties. And people, be very careful. I'm telling you, people, be very careful. They know what they're doing. They're smarter than we are. And they, You're and- not wrong. You're not wrong about the... the it's... A lot of it's a power grab. A lot of it is manipulating the public because they know that they can, if they get the public behind them, like Amazon, Amazon as a corporation, <laughs> Google as a corporation, Apple as a corporation does not have our best interests in heart. They just have profit, but they parade around the country pretending that they're really, that they really want to help the true real American and help in the in, inequality and injustice it's only they only do that so that the masses get behind them. Like if they have the power of the masses, they they and, can and hold you, all and the how power. How do they do it? They do it with social media. They do it with twenty four hour news and TV. Advertising is the biggest industry, well, right? Also, news nowadays is just uh, opinions. Like C- CNN, Fox is 
the propaganda wing for the Republican Party, and CNN is the propaganda wing for the Democratic Party. Yeah, but Fox They're not isn't actual any Republican anymore. They turn on Trump. Right, but Trump isn't the Republican Party. They One person on, isn't the party. I know, but they're, they're not even about your... I get it, but my point is that people are weak. They want to be led. They... Okay. I, th- I think that those... I agree that people want to be led because that's innately human. I don't think that that's weak to want to be led. I think that's just being human. Imagine if every every human, like you say that as a negative thing, like people want to be led. Imagine if every person in society was like, I'm a leader. I'm not going to listen to anyone. I'm only going to do what I want to do. Society would fall apart. You need the majority of people to not be leaders. You need that in a society. So when you say it as a bad thing, I see it as a good thing. If everyone was a leader, society would crumble. No one would be a worker. No one would work in a factory. No one would work on a farm. All of that would fall apart. You need that's a valid, That's a valid point. With them. What I'm trying to get at is that, and that's a valid point, and I agree with I don't disagree with what you're saying, but just to play into the hysteria and the fear and so forth, there is, maybe I wish people were more, Rather than just falling for this bullshit salesmanship, that's all it is. It's like it's like bullshit that's being fed. It's to them. just con artists, right? Correct. So, so maybe if they were a little bit smarter and not so ignorant and stupid, that they would ask questions more and they'd be a little more hesitant than than just drinking the Kool Aid. But do you think that you ever just end up drinking Kool Aid and you don't know you are, and sh- and you you are ignorant on a subject and you're just because. Um, What's his name? Because Tucker Carlson said it on Fox and you're just listening to him and you might be ignorant on the topic, but you, you don't think you are. Does that, do you think that that applies to you or just applies to the other side? Because I think it applies to you as well. I think it applies to me too. I think it applies to everyone. So to say like <laughs> the other side is ignorant and doesn't do any of the research the and drinks the cool. I'm, I'm not saying that's I'm just talking about people in general. Right. But do you fall prey to that as well? I'm sure the times that I must have, or maybe I'm not aware of, but like, like you say, you you say uh, that you know that Trump won the election and that it's all a scam. But how do you know? I just because it's what I feel based on from right, what I. You, so you you feel that he won the election, but you say you know he. I think there's a okay. When I say, well, I'm just I saying know, because I don't, I can't, I'm not part of it. I'm just saying based on. But do you what think you're I, ignorant on the subject of voter fraud in America? I surely am. I don't, I don't know much on voter fraud in America. I, I said, I'm not talking about a specific type of that issue. Have I researched the issue? No. Okay. Do I listen to things? Do I talk to people? Do I draw my conclusions based upon various things that I hear and listen to and view? Yes. I'm talking about the issue of the general what's going on with society and our public and things like that. Society has gotten very ignorant in general. Very different than taking a specific issue. I have my certain core beliefs. I'm not saying they're all right or they're all wrong. I'm saying they work for me. But I'm telling the same token that I don't, I think there's a much bigger picture out there what's going on with this, with our political arena, what's going on with society and big corporate business and i'm not saying from a conspiracy theory i'm saying the fact is what's really going on oh it's not even a conspiracy okay so there so therefore with that in mind i have some concerns and people just live their life do the thing they're comfortable they don't question they don't do anything with regards to that and i think people got to be very careful with what they wish for because i think some of the stuff could be irreversible and um i'm very concerned about it that's all yeah a big thing in like conspiracy boards that I read and stuff and conspiracy people who I listen to, um, which now it's not even really conspiracy because it's all happening. Like you said, they want to create like a centralized currency, which like is pretty spot on. Like that's that they, they, they say that the, the big corporations want to through COVID not, I'm not saying that anyone that they caused COVID, but saw it as a, an opportunity to take advantage and accelerate what the, their plan was which was basically to get rid of legacy systems is what they're called. So like cash is a legacy system. And if you can, you know, if you get rid of cash, then everything becomes online and then people become dependent on the online banking. And if, I mean, online banking is even so like, it's not real. 
your money is doesn't really exist. It's like Venmo is not real. Right. It, your money, like when you're transferring the money, it's like technically you are transferring data, but you're not really transferring gold or cash even. You're not doing it until you pull it out of the bank. It's not real money. But you don't even even exist the money. Right. Technically, it doesn't. It doesn't even really exist until you pull it out. Um, so th- they want to get rid of cash. And, uh, and you know why. Why? Why do you think why? Why do I think? Well, I just said because they want us. Because cash, there's a power in, in currency that is tangible. Like if me and you want to exchange goods and I can physically give you something, that's between just me and you. If it's online in an online bank in a database and a server, it's not controlled by us. So whoever, Bank of America who controls that, they're in complete control of whatever we, whatever goods we exchange. I can't just walk up and, and make any deal I want. It has to go through the online bank, which is controlled at any point. They can just shut it down whenever they want to. They can pull, we become completely dependent on the banks because they can just pull everything away from us. Not and if you banks, have no liquid money. Not in the banks, the government. Okay? Yeah. They track everything. They'll know your net worth. They'll see every move. They see our moves enough with cell phones and the internet and the algorithm and so forth. For example, you search something up, you get a, how many 50 ads related to that. You talk about something and your iPhone later, two seconds later, pops up an advertisement. Of course, it's listening to everything. But the smart TV, your smart device, your tablets, your cell phone, they listen to everything. It's about control. It's about them seeing everything that's going on. The, what was, was it California said? I think you told me it's that California, they would have the right that they would shut off utilities or your lights if you're having a party. Yeah, the mayor of LA. Um, okay, so you know that's the beginning? If, if you were having a party during co- in the COVID lockdown, they would shut off your power. They would shut off your, elect- your electricity, your water. Right, so imagine if them have complete control of your finances or your, or your banks and records and things like that. And they say, we're going to shut it down. We're going to the old expression, fight City Hall. And most people don't, are not in a position to fight economically. Yeah. And they shut you down. What's to say that can't happen? Yeah. No, serious. Big problem. Yeah. They also want to get rid of uh, car ownership, home ownership. Um, Explain that to me. What do you mean? Because if no one owns anything, then we're all in service of the state. Or the corp, the corporate, the corporate, over, the own corporate it. overlords. Right. It really, I think, it's even bigger than the government, the state. It's the corporations supersede. Who are paying state. the government to get what they want? Right. To I lobby. Think so. Yes. Yes. But all about money and the power. Yeah. And so they want if if you don't if like you owning the home that you, that we currently in, you mm-hmm. own this land, kind of. Not really. There's no real land ownership. You kind of just rent it from the government. No, you that's don't. what tax. That's what no, you property don't. taxes are. You pay the government every year for having the right to own this land. What is that if not a landlord? Yeah, well, uh, let me explain the reason why. You don't I, really own this land. The government at any point can come and take eminent domain. They can just take this land away from you, and you pay them every month But eminent every domain, year. If they and, take the eminent domain, if they get, do eminent domain, they have to give you the value of the land. So okay, but, still, it is an asset. You still own it. But the reason but you like if, if, I, if I gave you a shirt, and I said, or if you bought a shirt from J. Crew. But then every year you have to pay ten extra dollars to own that shirt. You don't really own that shirt; well, you're renting it. Okay, no, no. The difference is that why I disagree with you. For example, the roadways to get into your driveway, public roadways, utilities, and everything. But else don't you really, pay other taxes for that? What's your federal tax for? No, no. There's a local tax rate. Your federal tax. Right, but so you pay government. a property tax on top of all those other taxes. Listen, now, welcome to my world. I pay penny in taxes and and things like that, sales tax right. and so forth. But as but much back to the. Like how we got onto that because I was saying you owning this home, which I don't even think you really own anything. Nobody yeah, goes to the police school. Goes to the school. Your property system. taxes go too. Yes, really? that you okay. My property taxes go for the following: they go for your garbage and solid waste pickup, your sewer system, your police, I guess your fire, your um. Right, but still, you have no schooling. choice but to pay those. Well, so you. That, but but listen, so you're not really in your complete freedom of owning your house. You have but, no choice but to pay the property taxes. And you, you, then you have to go off the grid. Of course, I don't have a problem paying property taxes. I believe you own it. You got to buy, you own it, but, but you need, there's facilities to it. Yeah. But anyways, you owning this home, there's a power in that. Right? Like, you own this land. Yes. There, you, like it's you mine, have, you're not it, taking it, it away. 
Right. You own this land and you have a small independent business that you are the owner of. It's not a corporation that you work for. You own it. So there's power in both of those things. You're an indep- like that, and that's a threat to a government because you're an independent individual, and that is not beneficial to a state. They, you don't you want people to be dependent on the state, not independent. So through COVID, and I'm not I'm not saying if this was purposeful or it's just a symptom of it, but the matter of fact at the moment is small businesses have been destroyed, and all those people who owned those small businesses are now not all a lot of those people who own the small businesses are either unemployed or they're forced to get a job at the corporations that can weather the storm of COVID the Walmarts the Targets the Amazons those people let's someone owned their home like let's say before COVID someone owned their home and had operated a small business they were independent and that and was were powerful they made choices in their own life that could affect their life. Which is what America is based on, capitalism. Right. And so now, nine months later, let's say in March they had that life, now their business was forced to shut down, so they don't, and they, they couldn't pay all their employees, so they had to uh, go they had to, to go bankrupt because they couldn't afford the rent after nine months of paying rent without any income, right? So they, the company went under, and now let's say they can't afford their the mortgage on their house, so they... They now rent an apartment instead of living in their house that they got rid of. So with it, and, and now they have to get a job because they have to have income in. And the only companies that are hiring, no small companies are hiring through COVID. It's, so now they're a manager at Walmart instead of owning their own small business. The lack of, the loss of power that has occurred in that individual's life is staggering. To go from owning property and owning a business and making your own decisions that affect your own life to now working at a massive corporation that you have no power in. That's assuming they even get a job. Right. But what I'm saying is like, that's the shift in a lot of Americans' lives through these through this year. And that's a huge, huge problem for the uh, future of this country. Okay. So not only is it a huge problem, and I, and I agree completely with everything you're saying, the difference, but here's where, and this whole COVID thing's fucked up, you know my views on Government coming in and co- causing these mandates to shut these businesses down is unbelievable. If they try to shut me down, I don't think I would even allow it. Okay, so, but the problem is this, is that the huge direct and trickle-down effect on these individuals, their businesses, their net worth, things they worked so hard for, is all gone. It, it's terrible. And, and I'm telling you, I think, again, purposeful, I think it's done purposely, about control, about separating the haves and haves nots even further and creating no middle class and giving the power and control to the government to make and the big business to make people dependent. And, and, it's, and it's very scary and very bad. And um, hopefully people have enough money put away and they can emotionally and financially weather this. And maybe there's some Most people right. can't. I know, it's sad. But and maybe- now in Jan- come January, when all the uh, eviction... There were like eviction laws that were put into place through COVID so that people couldn't get evicted because so many people lost their jobs. Those are all being lifted in January. So we're about to see a yeah, January is going I, to be a I, bad I have, month in this I have country. clients that represent that um, will are, haven't been able to pay their rent and they're going to be evicted and they're not going to be able to go to another place to rent because they don't have the money, they don't have the first list and security. But then again, landlords are in a business of renting. They're going to have to work with their tenants. They have to do something because otherwise there's going to be vacancies. There's going to be more people homeless. It's a big problem. Big it's a big problem. problem. Big problem. So um, th- this is an, uh, an article that was published in the World Economic Forum, which like conspiracy people believe is kind of behind a lot of the secret going ons in the world and a lot of like pulling the strings in a lot of places and has nefarious actions behind it. And they're like cons- trying to consolidate power or whatever. I'm not saying I agree with those things. Mm-hmm. And I don't, nec- <coughs> I don't necessarily Jeez. agree that COVID was created in order to enact all of this. I do think that people, that this occurred and people saw it as an opportunity to enact certain controls. But anyways. See, I think this is purposeful, part of the master's plan, way above our expertise and our knowledge, with smarter people, greater organization. They know exactly what the fuck they're doing and we are just pawns in this shit. Yeah. And we're fucked. And, and you, you know what's even you more kids sad? kids are fucked. You know what's, even, what's more sad is that We've been so conditioned by the the real people in charge and by the media 
to not question anything at all that like us having this conversation, there are going to be people who listen to this, who know us well. And just for us bringing up these questions, those people are going to be like, wow, Bronson and John are crazy. They've, they've fallen off the deep end into conspiracy world. Right. And, They're bizarre. Correct. Well, right. And it's like, we haven't said anything crazy. All we're doing is just questioning what's going on. The, we've been so conditioned as a society to not question what's going on that you're deemed crazy if you do that. And, and that's that really go, sad. Does that go back to what, what I say? People are idiots all the time. Yeah, it's sad. And it, I mean, obviously there are people who take it way too far and like they are crazy. Like Alex Jones types. Like he takes it way too far and but maybe we need those super, kind of- super intelligent, like interdimensional beings that they're the ones that are controlling things and stuff. I think it's very entertaining to listen to that kind of stuff. I... That's not what we're saying here is what I'm trying to say. We're not, we're not in crazy conspiracy land. But anyways, back to this World Economic Forum. So that's a, you know, everyone knows the World Economic Forum. Here's an article that they published in 2016. So before COVID, before anything, um, the title of the article is, Here's How Life Could Change in My City by the Year 2030. It says, Welcome to the year 2030. Welcome to my city, or should I say our city. I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or any clothes. It might seem odd to you, but it makes perfect sense for us. Everything you consider to purchase has now become a service. We have access to transportation, accommodation, food, and all the things we need. One by one, all these things became free, so it didn't end up making much sense for us to own much. First, communication became digitized and free to everyone, then clear energy keeps going on. The, the, the really scary stuff is, but here it says shopping. I can't even remember what that was for most of us. It has turned into choosing things to use. Sometimes I find this fun and sometimes I just want the algorithm to do it for me. It knows my tastes better than I do by now. When AI and robots took over so much of our work, we suddenly have time to eat well, sleep well, and spend time with each other. The concept of rush hour makes no more sense. And then here is the end of the article. My biggest concern is all the people who do not live in our city, those we lost on the way, those that who decided that it became too much, all this technology, those who felt obsolete and useless when robots and AI took big parts of our jobs, those who got upset with the political system and turned against it. They live different kinds of lives outside of the city. Some have formed self-supplying communities. Others just stayed in the empty and abandoned houses in small 19th century villages. Once in a while, I get annoyed at the fact that I have no real privacy, know where I can go and not be registered. I know that somewhere everything I do, think, and dream of is being recorded. I just hope that nobody will use it against me. All in all, it's a good life. Much better than the path we were on. That's an article that's published by the World Economic Forum. In 2016. Mm-hmm. And we're not that that's far the, from That's that. the way the world is going, by the way. Yeah, no, no ownership, no privacy. That's scary. It's just weird that the World Health Organization is writing that and being like, this is what we want people to think. Scary. Yeah. Crazy. And so you, you, there, you just well, reach Take your like generation. That. Take you, for example. It's so you own a car, I get it, things like that. But we talked about you owning a, buying a house one day, owning cars, and you were somewhat opposed to that maybe six months ago when we had that conversation. Now yeah. I think your opinion would change. I think so. I mean, I... Why is that? I, I, well, why don't you tell the listeners your opinion six months ago when we spoke how I told you, I was talking to you as a father, which I am, so you... Well, my opinion... Yeah, go on. Wait, hear me out. And I was talking, I was telling you how mom and I, how, you know, you... you Buy a home, a small home, you finance it, you eventually pay it off, you sell it, you parlay into something bigger, you build some net worth with a car, things like that, and you are opposing me, saying, why do you need a car? We, we, my generation just wants convenience, and we're about the experiences, we don't care about owning things, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, that's great when you first 10 years, 20 years, but now when you're 50, 60, 70, you are nothing to show for it. And we had these... It wasn't a heater, but one of the John and Dad, you know, John and Bronson. John and Dad. John, right, I got it, Bronson. Wise ass. <laughs> um, um, John and Bronson debates. And now, after you see what's happened to your lovely city you live in, L.A., you see what's going on as you start maturing and you start researching things more and so forth, I think your tune has changed. Would you not agree? Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I do think that I always saw the value of home home ownership, the car ownership, I, like I said that back then, I never would have said, why would I never, why would I ever own a home? What I did say back then, and I still do believe, is that it's so hard to own a home now. 
like homes are so expensive for like in people came back from um world war ii like our like my grandparents your parents generation came back from world war ii and literally bought starter homes that was literally a word a starter home and it was any everyone could afford it and you get a loan well not everyone but most people could afford it you would get an easy loan every most people would be approved by, for the loan no problem and you'd buy a nice two three bedroom home and that built up the suburbs in america that was the creation of the suburbs you can't do that now there's no inexpensive home everywhere in america you have to go to very specific places if you want to buy a home at my age while you also have children and a car and work a job things are just so much more expensive and and salaries are so much cheaper but in all fairness, a starter home in California is over a million dollars. But who says you need to start a home? You can buy, for example, you know, people when we grew up, I remember our parents used to drive an hour and a half each way to get to work just so they can have better cost of living and they would spend more time in the car. Today's generation, everything's about convenience. You know, you grew up, and again, this is our fault. You grew up in a certain lifestyle that God forbid you buy a place for $150,000, which by the way, you can. You can put money down. You finance it. Interest rates are at an all time low. They're you know low three percent, and you can finance it. Most people you, don't even have the money to put down. Yeah, but, but that's but also a, a that's a different issue. Right, that is a okay, different people, issue. You know whatever it is, but but I'm talking about there are ways. That the difference is the kids today want the home. They want the fancy car. They want the bigger place. They would. They don't want to drive further. So you can't have a cake in the two. At some point, real estate's gonna. There's no more real estate in this world. It, it already exists. So we'll continue to get more and more expensive. Yeah, Mars, we'll, we'll make go to Mars. Okay. And let me know how that works out for you. But my point is, so, so in five years from now, we're going to have this discussion. And you can say, oh my God, the real estate is even more expensive. So at some point, you got to invest in yourself, believe in yourself, do what you need to do, make some sacrifices, like you put away for your retirement and so forth, make some sacrifices. You buy a place sooner or later. I'm not saying do it now. You're only going to be 25. But you need to start, the kids today start, need to start thinking about it Rather than just living for today. Yeah, a lot of people my age don't plan for the future. We weren't. We were never really taught that. I feel like like it was never. Uh, that's bullshit. This, it was never a put on us. That's bullshit. I don't agree. That's a cop out. We, but I also think I think with COVID, I'm I'm just formulating this thought now. I think with COVID that might change things. Generations before us faced really significant life altering events that. For, that forced you to realize that you were like mortal, right? That you were going to die, right? Like, like I said, my grandparents, your parents' generation came back from World War II and they were all like, oh my God, the world is a terrible place. It's really difficult. We have to plan for the future because it could be taken away from us at any moment. So they were really good with money. Mm, but what do you my mean? generation, we never had any hardships as a, as a society, the last 20 years have been very easy for society in general, in America, not for the rest of the world. I'm speaking America only. So there's no, why would you think about the future and death when society is going so well and you can enjoy everything in TikTok exists why and YouTube do, okay, exists. Okay, and, but why no, but you know, obviously, that, of course, you're still going to think about, sci- about dying and stuff, but do you know what I mean? Like, no, but listen. We're not faced with our mortality because life is so good it has now nothing to do in much, general. Bronson, it's nothing to do with mortality. As I said, even a bear or a squirrel hibernates for the winter. You know what to do. It's instinctive. I'm fat and lazy. and We come up with excuses as to why we don't do things. The reality is, the reality is that it's up to the individual. And again, part of it is, is a taught behavior, but you have to plan for your future. Not death, but retirement. What's your game plan? What's your exit strategy? What are you going to do when you... Physical can't work. Well, you're gonna are you gonna have an opportunity to have someone take care of you. You need to plan. Just living day by day doesn't work. And your generation is a little bit lazy in that regard. Thinks about today. Thinks about convenience. Thinks about simplicity. Thinks about um, the experience. And the reality is, you know, that's all fine and dandy. But life's not a fucking vacation. Or my generation, most of them can't. They have to live day to day. They can't think about the future because they're literally living paycheck to paycheck. You so don't it's think only it was different day. when our mom and I live fucking paycheck to paycheck. We didn't save for shit. You have savings that you work on, that you save. You put a budget together. Okay, we didn't have savings. The first, I think the first time your mother and I was probably to say was able to save a 10, 15 years after being married. So you live, the problem, you live within your means, you absolutely, people can do That's it. the problem. People don't live within their means. That's the main problem. Well, 
it's that things are look. I'm not discounting things are expensive. Sometimes you need two spouses to you know the man and the woman to to work for double income. I get it, but the problem is it's it's always an excuse around just putting away, planning for your future. Worrying, you know, I'm not saying you got to live your life in fear of your future, but you 100 percent have to put away and a little bit important as to what you're going to go ahead and deal with regard to um your future. This, and and if we don't do that, you're gonna your generation's gonna become more and more dependent on those that have control over you when you need to have control over your own. That's just my opinion. No, I, I agree. I, I think I mean that's kind of this the last thirty minutes has just been a pretty much about control. That's like the the bottom line of what we've been talking yeah, about. Yeah, we're gonna look and back we're losing and, control we're gonna slowly. Look, let's wrap this up. We're gonna look back on this in five years from now and you're gonna see the fucking world's gonna the government's gonna control our ass. Yeah, well, especially once you give governments power, they don't take them back. And we've given the government so much power through COVID. The mayors of America all of a sudden are dictators. It's unbelievable. The mayors can just put in willy-nilly whatever laws they want, and everyone just has to follow in the city. That's uh, that's never happened in American history. And they're not going to just give that up. No, and and there's a bigger problem. And again, this whole social media shit's got to fucking end. Got to end. So last weekend, I want to tell you something. <laughs> so last weekend, we had a couple of couples over. Good people, good friends of ours. I'm not going to mention names, obviously, to protect the innocence. And <sighs> in one night, one night, I had couples, one person spilled the entire decanter of red And water. how old are you guys? You're all in your mid-50s. Mid-50s. Spilled, dropped the, because they were drinking. I don't mind, look, you know my thoughts on alcohol and drugs, and I'm not into it, but it's okay, so be it, and people do it, but you got to be responsible. So they drop, my house is all white, modern, looks like a drug lord Miami house. White floors, white furniture, everything, and they spill the whole fucking red wine, to can't to knock over the red decanter of wine all over the house. Which, it happens, I guess. Yeah, but 10 minutes later, um, and you know me, I fucking... It took a lot of growth for me to become. Yeah, I'm honestly, the fact that you didn't just erupt, just from that was big growth. Well, my big housekeeper growth. was there as well, and she thoroughly cleaned up everything. Otherwise, I would have lost. And it. you're lucky that you just had the grout in the floor sealed. sealed. All sealed. No, that's <laughs> huge, because that, it would have gone into the Because you didn't ground. have to worry as much, because it would it wiped It would have sucked in otherwise. So that was no problem, so that's fine. 20 minutes later, we're outside drinking by the fire pit, outside in the, in the backyard, and... The fucking dog knocks over a red glass of wine with his tail all over. Glass shatters everywhere. Fine, no problem. Go one step further. Then by the bar area, I have, I have white, you know, the white Venetian plaster? Yeah. Someone spills. What, Ron, what were you going to say? Well, most, I feel like a lot of people wouldn't. I didn't know what Venetian plaster was until you moved into this well, house. Okay, if you don't know what Venetian plaster is, look it up. I'm not going to explain it to you. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. I explain Venetian plaster. So um, it's a special kind of paint job on the walls. Red wine all over my fucking walls. I don't even know who to fix it. I got to find someone to come fix it. Sounds like you guys were having a wild night. I was miserable, miserable. And then to top it off, my buddy, so a couple of people leave, a couple of couples leave, and my buddy goes to use the guest bathroom, which is, of course, the nicest bathroom in the house because that's one people use. Fully decorated, old, no one nice. The nicest and also the grossest. Because people use it. Like who would ever, like Bryce, Br- our, Bryce and Burke? Literally will go. Burke will not. Burke won't. Bryce poops in the guest bathroom. All right. He poops in there. Ugh, There's five other bathrooms in the house, and he chooses to poop in that one. Let the record reflect that six and a half other bathrooms in the house. Oh, okay. So, so my point is this. So he comes out, my friend goes, um, I just took a leak in your bathroom, but I think so-and-so threw up. I go, get the fuck out. Who's throwing up in the bathroom? I go in there at 1230 at night, fucking throw up all over the toilet and shit. Unbelievable. I'm fucking livid. So I put on my mask and my gloves look like I'm a doctor. And at 1230, grown man like myself is clean up someone else's fucking throat. You guys had a rager. That's, you know, that's just the. Oh, that, is that like the, those parties like you go a grape, to? Yeah. Well, people, just like a, a party that's really good as a rager. Uh, I entertained too much. It was just, a, I was miserable. It was, and I love the person. So it's no big deal. I can't get mad at them because I guess, but. But our age, to get to that point with the drinking, the throw up, and I'm cleaning up. I don't think I've ever fucking, it's got to be 20 years since I clean up fucking throw up. Human throw up, at least, yeah. Disgusting. Ugh. 
disgusting. Yeah. Honestly, I, it shows big growth of you that you haven't, Thanks. that you weren't freaking out. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate no, it. No, but it's true. Yeah. A year, two years ago, you would have flipped out, yelled at everyone, told everyone to leave the house. Oh, that's it. I'm, I'm tense right now. I'm aggravated. That shit's aggravating. Who wants to clean that shit up? Yeah. Oh, let me ask a question, Ron. How are we doing on our listeners? We always have a report on that. We're, we're doing very well. Uh, keeps going up and up. We now have a Facebook page, everyone. So go follow our Facebook page. What's it under? Uh, it's just Daddy Issues Podcast on Facebook. Okay. Um, so we're going to post things there as well. When we go live next week, I don't know if we're going to be doing it on Facebook or Instagram yet. Maybe both. I'm still trying to work that out. So go follow our Facebook page in case that's where we're doing it. We got a lot of listeners. I'll even bring it up so you can show. Because in our new studio, we have a TV right in front of us. So I we can love it. We can both look at, at the same thing instead of me having to turn my computer around. We have 1,560 listeners. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And wow. in our latest episode, we got a huge... We, so we lost our Kenyan listener. We haven't had a Kenya Someone for... Someone asked me about that the other day. We haven't had a Kenya for like three it. episodes, which is kind of a shame. They were upset by that. But in our la- latest episode, half of the listens almost are from Brazil. 41% of the listeners are from Brazil. 41%. It's not like 2%. I don't understand. I, we have a huge following in Brazil. 12 people in Sao Paulo listened. Uh, six people in Rio listened. I, I don't understand. Three people in Porto Alegre, Rio Grande do Sul. I don't know what that is. but One from Poland. One from Poland, one from the UK, and one from Canada on the latest episode. Um, now... A shout out to Brazil for I last guess, episode. You know what happened? Our Kenya person moved to Brazil. Yeah, must have. And he told all his friends and family. Ronnie, someone, who manages the Instagram account? Because someone says- Rice that, and I do. Okay, because someone asked, like, they said I should somehow get involved because they're, they're sending me personal- account. You don't have an Instagram, do you? No, to our Instagram. and No, they're not. We I, I see all of the- I show you. Whenever people comment on the Instagram, I show you their comments. Like Michelle commented, she said. Yeah, Michelle gave a, a very funny comment. I'll read it out, actually. Shout out, shout out to Michelle. as one of our local listeners. We appreciate your support very much. Thank you, Michelle. So we posted a... In our last episode, we were talking... Or two episodes ago, we were talking about gender roles and, and that whole thing. And it was got kind of heated between me and you. And Michelle... One of our fans commented on our Instagram post my woman, about it. Whatever, my woman knows her, her role, baby. She, no, she, wait, uh, know your role. Know she, your as role. a female, uh, kind of gave her two cents on the gender role topic. And she said, men's roles are to one, provide, two, love, three, barbecue, and four, take out the garbage. Women's roles are number one, to love them, number two, to feed them, and number three, to fuck them. Word up, Michelle. That's what she said. <clears throat> she knows her role. I love it. We'll keep the name private, but you know who you are, Michelle. Um, so yeah, we're, we're you know we're we're good on the we we, we got a, good, a lot of fan interaction, which is great. It's we love we love our week. fans. We love our we, fans. We do. We're very we love our fans. So thank you again. All right, let's go back to our list. This is so cool. You can do this stuff. Yeah, this is a great. Uh... All right, let's talk about. Well, so there's a tweet that I read out to you yesterday that you thought was really funny, but you only understood half of it. So I think I should What's a tweet again? A tw- like you know what Twitter is? You know what Twitter? Twitter? He thinks what? he's funny. Say all of wah, your wah, yeah. wah. We love that. <laughs> worth every worth every penny. That's the green button he's hitting, by the way. Yeah. Like go ahead. Um, you, know you know what a tweet is. I'm not gonna explain what a tweet is. But there was a tweet that I read to you the other day and you only under, understood half of it. So I thought I could explain the other half of it to you because, you know, we have our segment where like every week I try to teach you a new uh, youthful thing or like millennial internet type culture thing that you don't understand. And you've started understanding a lot of things. You even use them in your day to day, like incel and brony and those things like you slide into your DM. Right. So you, all these if, things, you know, if you know what I mean. So so the tweet goes like this. It says that someone tweeted, why do men start podcasts instead of going to therapy? Which I think is actually really funny. Hysterical. Because that's kind of what we're doing. We're doing like very no, improper. It's, but it's like men just shooting the shit. You got to respect that. That's what yeah. men like to do. Because no one listens to the men. Men can never get deep. 
The women say they want the men to get right. deep, but they don't fucking want to get the men to get no deep. No one really cares to listen to no, men. The women problems. roll the, the women roll their eyes. They don't listen to them. They, you know, it just doesn't make sense. So this allows guys, two guys to fucking get and together. And it's informal. Like you can just chat with your, your bros or Shoot your or your dad and you just can talk about it instead of like having to go and be formally like Which, complaining to someone. In this in this arena, arena, I'm your bro. Outside when the podcast's over, I'm back to being your dad. All right, fair enough. Seriously. So then someone tweet uh someone replied to that tweet and said so the original tweet was why do men start podcasts instead of going to therapy and someone replied to that tweet and said the same reason women start only fans instead of getting a real job and you were like what's only fans what is only so i thought that we could talk about what only fans is depends how if what if it's good or not what is an only fan only fans is a website that allows you to post whatever you want behind a paywall so like Let's say I started an OnlyFans and I could charge $10 a month and then people could access my content. And so every month for $10, you get whatever I'm posting. Oh, is it fans. like the hot girls do and men want to fucking follow them? Right, so, so it's say, turned into like a porn site pretty much. Oh, like gotcha. porn stars go on OnlyFans now and for $50 a month, you get personalized pornos, you get uh, pictures and videos of they can do whatever they want and it's all like independent because you're paying the person directly and it's become huge there because are, they want a volume of, of, of registrants right well it's gotten so big that people are making like 40 grand a month from only fans and there are but it but it Go ahead. but it's like revolutionized the porn industry because show me one give me an example well i you can only access them if you pay so I they don't can't, give you. They don't give you a preview. No, nah. no preview. Let's see. Let's try OnlyFans.com. So we're going on the website. Sign up for OnlyFans. I'll sign up with my Google account. Oh, that's cool. All right. So so created the account with Google. So now we're in the. But those say free. Yeah, these ones are free. So, so we'll go check like this the out. bottom one. Who's that? Mercedes Terrell. Terrell. He's free. Follow for free. She's an MMA ring girl. Okay. Follow for free. Oh, I have to add a card even just to follow her for free. Unbelievable. But so. This is a fucking Like business. see here all her posts. But it's like completely revolutionized porn because instead of just like one generic video How for everyone. How many followers does she have? Um, where does it say? Right here. 30,000. 31,000. Unbelievable. So hers is free, but like. Here, I'm reading an article from the New York Times about it. Um, that this girl, where'd it go? I just lost oh. it. This girl, Nina Harwood. Let's see if we can look her up. She's one of the biggest on the app. I'm in the wrong business. Nina Harwood. Nothing. Maybe I'm spelling it wrong. She has 100,000 subscribers at $10 each a month. So every month, 100,000 people are paying her $10. Unbelievable. Every month. And all she has to do is like those pictures. Oh, here. When, when she first joined OnlyFans in 2006, her first month earnings were $257. In November, she brought in $53,000. In October, she brought in $52,000. In September, she brought in $35,000. In August, she brought in $30,000. They're doing nothing. Well, so what it's, what, like, people love it so much because you, it's so, like, personalized. Or, like, you go to Pornhub and you watch a generic video that everyone's watching that's just one video for everyone. But with OnlyFans, I actually, I'm being truthful, I don't subscribe to anyone's OnlyFans, so I don't know for a fact. But what I've heard from people is that, you can get like personalized things. So you go to the OnlyFans page every day and if you're like a big subscriber to the person, they get to know you and they will make videos just for you and be like, hey, John, blow so-and-so here. And they like, they start to, you talk to them and you can have live chats with them and it's like a whole, uh, it's a whole crazy thing. Where people <coughs> are world, making world, so much world. money. Well, well why is the world over? I feel like this is even better because it's independent. These are, they're is almost, it? one could argue that these are entrepreneurs. No, no but it, this is like influencers. This is what the world is. So it's right, but isn't this better than like them all being owned by some like sleazy 
porn producer who was like making no, all the I money. I get it, but this is like just crazy amount of money made. In, in May 2020, OnlyFans was seeing about 200,000 new users every day and 6,000 to 8,000 new profiles being created every day. There were eight in May, 8,000 people were joining OnlyFans a day. That's is it only women crazy. or men too? Like, what's no, well, like Trey, here's, what's, what's here's Trey songs. He's a rapper or a singer. I don't yeah. know what he's posting. Um, but like some celebrities are on here. It's mainly just for, for porn. Um, and it, it's mostly men are the, the customers. Coffee and cleavage. Yeah, be kidding me. They have 115,000 followers. They've only posted 12 videos and seven pictures. That's nothing. What are you paying for? File for free. What's it They're say? They're a podcast. What's it say? File for free. Go no, but we have to put in a, a it credit does, card. It, does it say that? Yeah. Um, no. no. Yeah. Look, file for free. Oh, we're following them. Oh, my God. So they're... <laughs> Welcome to so they're a podcast. Here, I'll turn up the volume. a really, really good episode today. <laughs> oh, man. So. It's all boobs. It's called Coffee and Cleavage. It's two porn stars. They look like porn stars. They're blonde. Them. Yep, the biggest do. fake boobs, and they're pretending that this is a podcast. There's no way this is a real podcast. And their boobs are just hanging out. Not naked, though. No, not naked. Just cleavage. Prove that one. Yes. Wow, they sound so interesting. A lot of people have fancies. At least this one's free. Imagine if you paid twenty dollars a month for this. Is that you think? Yes, yes. <laughs> and sometimes a lot of people's fantasies stay fantasies forever. Should <laughs> we try to get? Good? Should we try to get the two of them on our podcast to be guests? Could you imagine? Coffee and cleavage. Fantasy. Uh, I think it's just it, it really depends on what it is and what they're. They're literally just sipping coffee. They with look the same too. Okay, this is so boring. Oh this is so God. boring. But How many pe- followers they have? People aren't watching for. People aren't watching for the uh, for the content. They have one hundred and fifteen thousand followers on OnlyFans because they're cleavage. and you could pay them. So like we could, we could tip them and send a message. So if we tipped them in like a big thing, then they'd know who we are, and they'd want to. We come should on tip a- them and say, "Please come on our podcast." Could you imagine? We can zoom them in. Why don't we do that? Coffee and Cleavage Club. Oh, we can join the club for $50. Oh, They'll follow us back and add us to the club list. And we have unlimited free messaging. Access to club only sets. And we get a free gift. Oh, that's worth $50. I want a free gift. Oh, wait. Here's their actual OnlyFans. Oh, yeah. They definitely are. Um, They're porn stars. Glamour lifestyle model. Otherwise known as a porn star. Oh, you gotta we got to add a card. She's online. We can chat to her right now. Come on, how do you know she's online? Look, the green, the green thing that means that she's online. See, it says available now. So you See, can that's talk what's to her good right about now? this thing. You could talk directly to the porn stars. You can. So you can say something to her. Well, she was. If we follow, no, we have to follow her. We have to add a credit card. Follow for free. No, no, no. Uh, but please add a payment card. Oh my god, what a racket! Let's see what. So her name was Lisa. No, not Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie is an actual big porn star. Linny Marie and Chantal Monique. Model, podcast host, vlogger, creative. All of those mean nothing. Spent lockdown with me. I wouldn't want it any other way. Check DM for photos. So she's putting nude photos up. I think maybe that's how we start getting more. We're at 1,500 followers. They're at 115,000. The only difference is they're showing their tits. I think we need to start showing our tits. So I think I should, go, should show my cleavage. I think we got to start an OnlyFans. So they're, they're coffee and cleavage. We should be bros and beers. <laughs> beers and bros. Beers and bros. Coffee and cleavage. No, beers and boobs. Beers and boobs. That's us. Right. Get a following. But beers and wants, boobs. Nobody wants to see our boobs. I don't know. I just shaved mine. I feel like they're they're good to uh, see right now. A too much information. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know what OnlyFans is. Oh my. And God. we subscribe to one now. And do we subscribe to that? We well, coffee and cleavage. We do. Did we? Yeah, following. And let us follow without. Um, we can message them. What should we message them? Why don't you say hi? Why do you do your thing? 
Hey, coffee. It's called coffee wrong. Coffee and cleavage. Big fan of the show. Oh my God, you're so funny. I host my own podcast with my father. We <laughs> love your content. Wink, wink. I'm not actually writing wink, wink. And would be honored if you, you and your... Uh, I'm trying to make a euphemism to their boobs. Like if you and your quote-unquote friends could join us on the No, podcast. I don't think you do that. That is... <laughs> Would be honored if you two um, joined us for an interview on one of our podcasts. When you on on an episode, one of our episodes. an episode to discuss the inner workings of OnlyFans. Look forward to hearing from you. Could you imagine hearing? From you, I think this they morning, probably won't do it unless we tip them. Is the real the real truth? You think this? Look morning, forward to hearing from you. Hit send. Let's multiple exclamation points. Send. And you send. It's great. Please add a tip to to the message to send it. Oh, oh, fuck. All right. Can you tip five dollars? I can tip anything. We just have to add a credit card. I don't want to have a credit card. Well, OnlyFans is very trust like it's very trustworthy. That's add a crazy. Tip. Messages with tips appear at the top of the recipient inbox. Tips are greatly appreciated. They keep us creating content you love. Tips also put your message to the top. All right, so we will tip them off the air. I'm going to put my credit card in. And next episode. We'll report back. Yeah, we'll report back with uh, our coffee and cleavage adventures. Oh my coffee God. and cleavage. Honestly, so I said earlier, we have an Instagram. We have a Facebook. We're starting an OnlyFans too, by the way. Beers and boots. We have no following. Well, we thought we wouldn't have a following on this. You think people would literally go on OnlyFans for us? Do you? <laughs> I don't know, baby. We could make some money on OnlyFans. People make money. Well, you have to have, we, we're not doing video yet. Well, we're starting next week. It it's going to be video. One of them, every one of them are going to be video? We'll see. We'll feel it out how people are enjoying it. Video would be cool, but we have to get But on OnlyFans, video. you don't have to just post videos. We can just post sexy pics of us. <laughs> Fucking crazy! You need to. You need a therapist. Maybe we should do. Well, listen. We should start a podcast. Yeah. Oh my um, god. All right. Well, now That's you know. Crazy shit. Yeah. I never get to oh, the internet, the World Wide Web, Ronnie. They were lasting three hours ago. All right. Where? I'm, it says right here. Um, what does that mean? That means like the the account Coffee and Cleavage was online three hours ago, but our girl, one of them, I don't even remember her name anymore at this point. Shouldn't She's they? online right now. So we, we could chat her up. You but, definitely got to tip and try us out. Yeah. What's yeah. the worst? What's the worst? We have a sponsor for our I'll, podcast I'll, I'll, anyway. I'll put your credit card in and then I'll subscribe to a few other OnlyFans while I'm at it just for research purposes. That's You're all. You're such a funny guy. <laughs> well, you know, we'll just, we have money coming up from our sponsor for our podcast. We'll use it as a company expense. Right. This is a great expense. Bingo. Oh my God. All right. Well, now you know about OnlyFans. And, uh, it was a good episode. Yeah, baby. Let's play this song as an outro. Out. We're still with you. Just, let's just play. We're still it. with you. Before we leave, make sure to follow us on Instagram, daddy underscore issues podcast. Follow us on Facebook at daddy issues podcast. Stay tuned for next week. We're going to be live Monday, eight Eastern six or five Pacific. Can't do math. Eight Eastern next week, Monday live holiday which is special the, which episode. Is the 28th. Yes. So today's we, Monday. Today is Monday. Yeah, the 28th of, of after Christmas. Yep, and you'll be able to see our beautiful faces for the first time live. So we got to be look clean. Yep, and right. we will be interacting with you, whatever, you know. Maybe we'll do some OnlyFans chatting live you with our know. girls coughing cleavage if they get back to us. All you right. You never know. So everybody have a great Christmas, great holiday. We don't want to offend anybody, so just we use the term generically, but great Christmas. Spend a good time, good fun, and a uh, good time with your family and loved ones. All right. I appreciate it. Play the song, Brian. All right. Love you, Dad. Love you too, buddy. Oh, yeah.